It is intention of our visit to share information as well as to get a closer look how the situation has been developed in dealing with various environmental changing, including the advent of new paradigm that the people call the fourth industrial revolution, uh, as popular name is Industry 4.0. I think everybody will know about this. As we know that the massive adoption of the internet technology, artificial intelligence, and virtual supply chain management has been dramatically, dramatically changed the mode of service of industrial manufacturing and trading business to deal with the customer around the globe. The use of technology make industrial manufacturing as product provider and business company as service provider provider, which the expert call customized flexible production system. It is therefore the production system need to change in our business school or maybe we call to develop various aspects including the curriculum education management system <coughs> accordingly for our alumni get ready to join the global business development. It will very much work if our discussion is able to share various information. At least we learn how this institution starting to change their paradigm following the new environment. This is what we are waiting for to get directly from the institution. Above all, we are also expecting that some cooperation with University of Matutara may be joint research, joint seminar, international seminar, student exchange, Lecture in chain, is it, if it is possible, we are welcome very much. It's all, thank you very much. Okay, maybe uh, it is some from us, uh, our information, maybe we can. Thank you for visiting. Uh, once again, I planted that out from my heart. Right? So it's all fresh. I really want to welcome you all to come to Thailand. Thailand is very hot. I hope you're adapting because otherwise um, it can be a problem the next few days. How long will you stay? I don't know, but then it's very hot. So um, um, I don't intend to speak long because uh, the purpose today is for a dialogue. So I will just act as a facilitator. I will just start some, some interesting topic for you to think about, for you to ask questions, for the observer, for them to ask questions of you. So you see in the midst there, we have Indians, we have Chinese, we have Thai, we have, a, um, we have uh, the, the mix of different nationalities. They come to us. Um, and increasingly, the Chinese are coming. Increasingly, the Chinese are coming, just like they're tourists. There are many tourists. Uh, please remind me later to do a video. I want to show you some collaboration with the Chinese. We cannot ignore the Chinese, uh, meaning that uh, not because they are Chinese, we have to we have to bow to them, but they are really a great business power now. So we need to work with them. Uh, here, there are quite a few of them. I like to think that at the end of the session, you will exchange your contact. So when they go home, and when you go home, you still have a network, and I'll talk about that a bit later. So uh, let me very quickly go through my own presentation and then we can start yours. 
Oh, then just an introduction myself. Uh, if you have a pen, I need you to do some notes. Uh, maybe not this one, but then you have my contact. You can get me on Facebook. You can get me on the mobile or WhatsApp. But right at the top, uh, I'm a product of the British uh, institution. I spent some 10 years there. Uh, that, that was uh, back in 1982. I had my doctoral degree. I did my master's degree there. And uh, I taught for four years in Singapore, which I wasn't happy. And uh, I worked from then in the early 80s. I had then worked in the global uh, business world for the next 25 years. I retired in 2007. I'm a retired businessman, and today I have been here in Thailand uh, for the last, I used to say 10 years, but I've been here for 11 years. Uh, my, I major in international marketing business, and uh, you see, uh, I presently now, uh, and every reader of business events, and since then been teaching at various university. Thailand, in Myanmar, in Vietnam. Now, this is my first slide, the very big numbers. So, my own students and, and then your, you guys, I want you to tell me what they are. Anybody recognize anything? There. US dollar. Very good, you recognize the US dollar. What else? <laughs> <laughs> what else you recognize? Very good. Andre said that it's the gross domestic product of Indonesia as of this morning. I updated all my slides this morning. This is US dollar 930 billion according to the most authoritative uh, World Trade Organization. This is where you get your information. US dollar 930 billion. Billion is uh, nine zero. Nine zero. Behind. Billion. Huh? Okay, that's the first one. That's 930 billion. That is your Indonesian economy. It's in Indonesian, but just remember, because I need to come back to your mind, those of you who have pens and paper, please write it down, because that will help me to come back to that number. So 930, 930 is not 50. 930 is 930. 930 is very close to 1,000. 1,000 is one trillion. One trillion, 1,000. So what about the second number? 690, US dollar 690. Anybody know what is that number? And that is in US dollar 690. Also concerning Indonesia. This is all Indonesia numbers. Okay. Right? Okay. Not per capita. This is. <laughs> Thank you for correcting that. <laughs> because this is not per capita, not GDP per capita. This is actually trade per capita. You are doing trade by the numbers. The trading, you do trading. The trade is, uh, I presume these are international trade. US dollar $690. That per Indonesian, you have 260 million people. So on average, each one of you is worth $690. Uh, okay, before you continue, is it good or bad? Well, the next two slides you'll tell me. So, you tell me the answer, huh? So what about the next 20%? Corn. What is 20%? No, you don't grow by 20%, I love that. <laughs> Any suggestion from both sides? 20%. 20% is the percentage of trade in Indonesia, a ratio of your gross domestic product. You mean contribution of trade in our national economy? Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That means you are doing trade, buying and selling in business. Since you are all business student, right? You are all interested in business. So 20% you are trading. Within your country, outside your country, I like to think these are figures that are, I just updated. It's outside of your country. You are doing international training, right? Outside. Because these are all a different countries, so I think my emphasis is really on the international. Can I have the next slide? Oh, well, before that, before that. Hi, can you go back? Can you go back one slide? This slide. You are now in Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, my Thai student, right? 
and a uh, Indonesian student. Uh, maybe I'll ask the Indonesian students first. How many of you think that the Indonesian economy is bigger than the Thai economy? Hands up. How many of you, Indonesian economy as a country, the economy of your country is bigger than Thailand? Hands up. In terms of total, Indonesia is bigger, but per capita, Indonesia is lower. I mean, as the GDP, as an economy, as an economy, the economy. Yeah, right. So the economy, how many of you think the economy of Thailand is bigger or smaller than Indonesia? How many of you say bigger? Thailand is bigger than Thailand, than Indonesia. By the way, Thailand has all the Japanese car in manufacturing in Rayong. I hope you can get to Rayong and then visit some of the, the car automobile factories. All the Toyota, Honda, Isuzu, Suzuki, everything is in Rayong. Because at one time, and then if you learn your, your, your subject very well, you realize why the Japanese has put the manufacturing facility in Thailand. So all manufacturing uh, cars in, in, in the Japanese are number one in making cars, right? They are all in the, also have a subsidiary or a joint venture in Thailand. And I would like to excite, this is my personal opinion. If the Thai don't work harder, he will go to Indonesia. All of them. Because, and I, I also know why they did not go before. They were there some 10, 20 years ago now. Maybe even longer. Uh, easily 20 years, I think. And they were all there. They started coming out from Japan and they put in their plant, they put in their technology, and then they started there. All Toyota, Toy, uh, Honda, Nissan, and they started all there. And they recruited them, and they, they recruited many Thai workers there. And the car is a product of Thailand. A product of Thailand. Anybody know why? Anybody here know why? Why all the Japanese manufacturers are out in Thailand? Uh, cost. Cost. Secondary. Environment. Environment. Yeah, I mean, the answers are, I know you guys are very smart, but you may not be wrong. But I'm trying to tell you the main reason. Anybody? Regulation. Regulation. Yeah, all right. I mean, distribution center, growing industry, it is not. It was to do with the balance of trade. Just like our friend uh, uh, Trump now doing to China. Whatever the president at that time, I don't know who, they say, boy, you are doing, you are selling a lot of cars to the US, but we are not selling anything to you. So they have a, a big difference in the balance of trade. No, but then the Japanese are very tight, a very close market. They don't like people to go into their market because they have a very good business inside there. They make a lot of money. Anybody comes in there, they get very jealous. So they don't want people to disrupt their structure. So if you imagine you go to Thailand and open the door, somebody just say, all day, welcome, welcome, welcome. Their salary is higher than an MBA graduate. My MBA graduate, if we get a salary, they are not as much as the Japanese who stand by the door and say, they'll come all day. That is their economy. Make money easy, can enjoy easily. They don't like people to disrupt them. So up to today, they are still pretty close. I was a businessman there and I know it very well because they will give all kinds of reasons that you cannot reject as why they don't want to buy your product. Oh, you don't meet my standard. Mostly. Uh, our standard is here. But uh, your standard is here. So when you meet your standard, you can come. So you just use those, uh, what, what do we call those? <coughs> what do you call those? One way most commonly used to stop somebody coming to your country is to put a tax, a tariff. So if I put a tax, you, can't, you, you don't find it profitable to come. But in this case, they said no. These are non-tariffs, but they nevertheless are stopping others from coming to their country. So it's not easy to go into country. So, come back to the point why there are so many uh, Japanese manufacturers in Thailand. So they thought of an idea. Okay, we go to Thailand, we make a car in Thailand, and then we ship from Thailand. And so they have started shipping cars from Thailand. And Thailand have a, have a strong base. And then Thailand has a population of 70 million, which is uh, 70 divided by 260, right? Uh, how many percent of your population? At that time, 
the economy of Thailand, when they come out to Thailand, up to today they sold one million car. They can make, they have a local market. So they make for the local market and the extra, they export to the, to the US and they call that made in Thailand. So there is no trade balance to the argument last time. So they can, they can sell some other other people's car to, 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 to the US. So that is one issue. Um, what are the what are the challenge that uh, maybe I ask you now? Uh, why wasn't that the car about 10, 20 years ago? Why didn't they set up a plant in Indonesia? Why don't the Toyota, the Honda, the Nissan set up in Indonesia? And yet now I'm I'm, I'm fearsome for the Thai. If the Thai don't work harder, so some of these you no know, Nissan or all of them when they all go, they'll go all at, at, at once. So. My personal opinion, this is my personal reading, my personal observation, the Thai themselves are nervous. And of course the Indonesian are now saying, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we are all including some of you guys. When, the, when this Japanese car industry will move to your country, you will be big time. Just like you, the cars that are exporting from, from Indonesia. What is the reason now? Why do you think I feel like that? Racing. Very simple reason now you can afford. 10, 20 years ago you don't have the market. So just like I mentioned, they made for themselves in Thailand. The Thailand has a one million car market. And you have 260 million, even easily. Now as the economy take off, your economy can absorb the cars made in, made in your own country by the Japanese. But joint venture with Indonesia. So that is the reason why I think as your economy, there is a huge market. 260 million people. And if you take a small proportion, there are so